John Mayer in studio. Hey, dude. How are you? Dude, thanks for coming in. I appreciate that. That's, thank you for supporting this record and the song and uh, giving me an opportunity to come in. You know, uh, I guess we can start this. We were talking yesterday. The last concert that I paid money to go to was your show. I, I saw you in Minneapolis, and we went up and watched that show. And I can't go tonight, and now you're like three blocks down the road. Well, you can't afford it? I can't. <laughs> I spent money. I, 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 I gave you tickets. I'm, doing, I'm at the Opry tonight, and oh, cool. so, yeah, I can't come. Listen, it's always a cool reason not to come to my show because someone has a show of their own. We're, we're having a debate in this room before you came in, and you may not want to answer this. Which song are you just tired of playing? Um... I'm tired of playing Waiting on the World to Change. Oh. Boom! What did I say? Pay Nothing. up! <laughs> Why, that I would have one or that it would be Waiting on the World That it would to be change? that one. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Why do you think it is? I have a whole different reason. Why do you think it is? I have a reason I'm tired of hearing it. Why do you think I have a reason? <laughs> oh, that's funny. Let's go. Let's boogie. <laughs> Let's boogie. Here we go. I'm leaning into this go one. Go ahead. Now, why, do you, why are you tired of playing it? Um, it's, it's honest to God, it's just a tactile thing. It's just after a while, like... By the way, you're going to be like, oh, well, I hated the message. I was like, I just didn't like the way it felt in my hand. Um, it's right outside of my range. Like when I had a vocal surgery, uh, that I had a procedure, and like it, 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 it cost me like two or three notes. And I needed those notes for Waiting on the World to Change. So I kind of, kind of have to sneak around it. So it's not exact. It never really was the most comfortable thing to sing. So weirdly enough, like all the songs that became very popular are, are very difficult to sing for me. Meanwhile, all I wanted to do was like have a hit with like, who says I can't get stoned? Just wake up at five in the morning and be able to do it. And uh, so I'm weird when it comes to hits, man. Like, I don't know what makes a song of mine a hit. I have a feeling it's like there's something in, like you do stand up. Uh, you know, like your middle funny joke to you is your funniest joke to the crowd. So, I don't. I never know what joke's gonna be the funniest. It's the one I, that that you're the least excited about. Like it's your throwaway. Yeah. They love it's the accidental That's or right. the throwaway. Yeah, because you're interested in the upper ranges of your mind. Like how can I be more clever? How can I be more interesting? And then somewhere in your in your middle is where the crowd kind of grabs onto what you're saying. Like the crowd probably applauds and you go, you go like, oh that, oh you like that, okay, because that really didn't feel like anything coming out of my head. It's the same thing with music. It's like all the stuff where I'm like, oh my God, this is so complex and interesting and people are going to love it. Like they kind of don't. It's the stuff that for me, I feel like is a little bit, um, it bores me just a, the slightest bit. <laughs> and that's what it, we love. It becomes <laughs> like whatever I find boring in it, people find accessible in oh. it. Here's the joke I'm thinking about the opera tonight. You tell me it's funny. Yeah. Okay. I haven't used it yet. Yeah. We'll have to bleep it out. Okay. You see the guy that got caught pleasuring himself at the movies to the emoji movies. Yes, this is good. Well, that's not that good. <laughs> no, I mean, it's a good, it's a good... Right. Everyone is freaking out about the guy doing that to himself in the theater. I'm just wondering which emoji he thought was super hot. Okay. <laughs> so, so, that's a setup. That's not a, that's not a punchline yet. It's still a setup. Right. So then you break it down. Is it the salsa lady? There you go. No, so then I go through the break. thing. There, and then at go. the end, I end up with the purple. It's, yeah. The zucchini. There's a lot the of places. Eggplant. Yeah. Eggplant. It's the right. eggplant. Right. Is, is it the poop emoji? Right. But I don't think people are like, that's funny as I start rolling through emojis. Like, I think that's funny. It's funny if you can break it out. And I'm, I hate that I'm on your radio show telling you how to be funny. It's okay because I'll tell you what songs I think are there we good. Go. So we're all good. <laughs> like, we're we're go. in a good place. There we no. go. <laughs> Where's your dog, by the way? Because I'll watch on social media. Yeah. This is kidding. No, <laughs> this, is my, this is a real question. Okay. Yeah. Does your dog stay in Montana? My dog does not stay in Montana. This, this is what happened. <laughs> Got a dog. Wanted to have a dog on the road. Road dog. Uh, a dear friend of mine happens to be an incredible dog trainer. She took my dog, trained my dog, uh, turned into a perfect beast. And then I was like, okay, I'm going to take my dog on the road. Dog hates music. <laughs> hates <laughs> music oh, no. he thinks it's like thunder <laughs> like thunderstorm so he's trembling in the dressing room first night i think red rocks was like the first place we were like okay well i got a dog let's do this cowering in the corner also like when he's home with me if i pick up a guitar and plug it in and start playing it he does the funniest thing like he doesn't want to offend me but he like slowly slinks his two paw front paws off the couch and just waddles out of the room because i'm playing <laughs> music so it wasn't going to work but it turned out that my dog trainer she loved him so much and she said well he's a part of our family too so I'll be the mommy and I thought that's awesome so my dog lives a better life than I do he lives in Brentwood California 
and I pick them up. It's like doggy daycare, but it's months long. How about this? The the fact that you see colors when you play. I don't have synesthesia, and people. Okay, that's the that's word on no, the street. People, no people. Somebody. Um, Why would someone fake that to about you then? Well, pe- people misinterpret my metaphors a lot, which is easily done. And uh, I don't have synesthesia. I have a, probably some um, interpretive form of synesthesia. S- synesthesia, by the way, is uh, some people have a clinical, I don't know if I'd call it a disorder, it's a gift of sorts, whereby words and sounds actually are interpreted as colors in their brain. I have it, but not visually. I'm pretty close to it. I have relative synesthesia. Like so you what could, are you seeing when you're playing a solo? What are you seeing in your head? How are your numbers, uh, colors, muscle memory? What is it? Shapes, colors... Uh, geometry. That's actually, man, you're a very good interviewer. Like so, you're asking really interesting, untrodden on questions that are exciting to answer. Uh, the way that I do it is tons and tons and tons of streams of possibilities of shapes. What's where? Where does it go? And I've done it for so long now that a lot of that data has sort of dissolved, and it's all feeling now. I just know where it is. I just, it's very Jedi now. Like, I just know where it is. And it's, sometimes I don't know how I know. It'll be different every single night. But I found some weird confluence of what I know and what I don't know, but what I'm pretty sure is going to be there. And it's more fun than ever to play guitar because I'm not playing it like a student of guitar anymore. John Mayer is here now. <laughs> so I'm buds with the guys from the Zach Brown Band and Clay Cook. Yeah. And so... And I know the story, but you and Clay were at Berkeley together, mm-hmm. and Clay was like, hey, you know, let's move down to Atlanta, and you and Clay kind of had a, lo- a duo together for a sure. while, right? Yep, that's how we started. That's how I started right out of college, was playing in an acoustic duo. And so you move down to Atlanta, and so why Atlanta, of all places? He had Clay had family in Atlanta and said, I think we can, do, and he said there was a great music scene down there, which he was absolutely right. He did have family, and he was, <laughs> wasn't lying about either, family and a music scene, so... Uh, we moved down there and just started doing open mic nights and writing and, you know, he, he, that's how I got my start in music was following him down to Atlanta. We lived in Snellville, Georgia. Are you on the radio in Snellville, Georgia? Where everybody's somebody. That's the name. That's the catchphrase oh, for the town. Is it that. snail like the snail, the bug? Or snail, but it's pronounced Snailville. But it's Snellville, S-N-E-L-L. So you guys moved to Atlanta and you write a lot of things together. Yeah, we wrote... Uh, we had, we had, we had written you know five six songs at that point. And we're still trying to put it all together. So you guys decide to go your own different ways. Is that a big decision for you two? Yes. Yeah. Well, no one's ever cared about this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, falling out. We had a falling out. Be creatively. Did you part of it? That was part of it. Uh, the part that I can attest to. Um, is that I have pretty, I have pretty big feet, pretty strong head. I don't think anybody could have been in a duo with me at that time. That's the part that I can take responsibility for, is that I probably wasn't extremely collaborative. I was, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't think I, I, I don't think I was a, a, a strong group worker. What were your roles in that duo? Yeah, because everybody's got their role inside of a team. He was, um, and still is, hyper-musical, incredible musical mind. Um, and we were also, by the way, complete, we're, 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 we're really good friends now. I mean, we have I've seen you play with them before, so I'm now. assuming now you guys are cool. Pure closeness. Yeah. These, these are two kids who are the stars of their town, the musical stars of their town, coming together, obviously seeing something in one another that they identify with, making music together, but never having really given over to someone else and probably shouldn't have, two really strong solo kind of mindsets, coming together to collaborate, and where I think if you're, if you're still going, well, it doesn't add up, uh, put me in his life as a guest, and it gets a little strange. It's like two people sharing a birthday, you know? It's like he, I, was, I, I entered his entire social life, you know? And I think there was an identity thing of like, wait, what's mine and what's yours? And, and again, taking responsibility for it, um, I have very big shoes. I'm not necessarily subtle, it's spe- especially at that age. You, you didn't want to mess around with young John. You don't want to mess around with 19-year-old John Mayer who just figured out that the world is bendable and he's out to just destroy it. 
you know. But this is my new record, The Project. Oh, that's a the Lindsay L record. Yeah. That, that's so can we get a shot of the, my new record, The Project? Sure Part it of it was because, you know, they didn't really recognize me on the, on the cover. But this is who I, this is my new record. I went by Lindsay L. And uh, can we play a cut off that? Sure. No, uh, yeah, sure can. Here we go. So, yeah. So, there it is. This this is a great recording. Isn't it? You're asking me, like, seriously? Yeah, it's a great, Love it. it's a great recording. Yeah. What's the difference? Why do you say recording? I just hear a song. The way it, the way it was engineered, it's sa- it's gorgeous. It's the best. That's the gravity's the best record. Like you know, it's the difference between song of the year, record of the year, yeah. the Grammys. Like that's this isn't this is a quite a record. This is how spare it is. If I stop talking, well now I'm just gonna keep going because we're so close. But really key it. into the record, especially the vocals. This is Gravity from Continuum. Check it out. Gravity. When I, I went to, when I went to a show in Minneapolis, you didn't play it. I was sad, and I know you get that every it's show because so you can't play everything. Well, I, well, no, but you saw me in the beginning of this tour where I was like, I, I'm gonna just play whatever I want, and the crowd uh, was adamant that I play Gravity. So we added Gravity back in every night. Great, and that's cool. Look, it's cool to be that artist where, you know, there are things that people identify with you so so much that you have to play them. I, I dig it. And, and I'll play Gravity every night for the rest of my life. Like, that's a song I'll never get tired of. Amy, what's your favorite song off the new record? Oh, well, you know I have the one about... She doesn't sh- know any words to it. She just knows parts of it. No, I know about how. I just think it's really, really clever about how you keep the shampoo in the shower in case... And romantic. And, I, like, I think every girl sort of would, would, would want a guy to to sing that for her I or write got that. sticky hands man it's hard <laughs> hard getting hard getting out for it's, me it's it's good but it's I mean this song no dude wants to have to write this song though yeah Look, but he's both being vulnerable this song's sorry this enjoy song's it the you love it listen, listen. The room, she no one knew what to do with it but listen I know because she told me what so. do you give the song to like and this leads in the, in the blood conversation like she says if you're a station that's like a AAA station, you play John Mayer music, and all of a sudden Columbia's like, "Hey, here's the next John Mayer single." Like, it doesn't fit anyone's radio station. But does it have to fit? Because I'm a guy. I don't, I don't think, think so. everything I'm has to you. fit radio. I think nothing has to fit radio. I'm with you, man. I mean, I, maybe that's why we're still filling the places up with people, is because I I'm not following this sort of format rule, you know. Like I put mixtapes out. I feel like. So. Listen to that, though. Mm-hmm. And you're here for a reason because you have a song. And I remember I went to a show and I was talking. And by the way, Lee Leibsner is your guy. Do you want to explain who he is? Lee Leibsner uh, died in 1941 and has come back as a ghost to set things straight. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. I'm just pitching movie ideas now. <laughs> Lee, for thir- 13, 13 years or so, like Lee has been... In one way or another, with you, champion, my champion of the stuff that I make. He, I, I there are times he probably uh, doesn't see where a song could work, and promptly stuffs that thought deep, deep, deep down inside him, and and returns back with the thought that this song can be huge, and goes out and fights for it. I mean, there's a guy who I've funniest thing he ever said in his life was about still feel like your man, because I thought that it could change stuff. Like I, I, I always believe that a song can change a format. A song can change people's thinking. And we're backstage at Madison Square Garden. Columbia's there. And this is right before Still Feel Like Your Band comes out. And I looked at him. We had just finished a hug, but now we've got hands on each other's shoulders. And I said, I really believe in Still Feel Like Your Man. And he said, and we know that you do. (laughs) (laughs) And I thought that was just absolutely the funniest thing. That a record company, like the funny, if there was, if there was a Curb Your Enthusiasm style show about my life, I would write that in and that would be in the trailer. It's hilarious. And we know that you do. <laughs> That's a guy who can't lie, man. It was amazing. But listen to the jam. Three oh, I days. think it's the jam. Three days. Three away. days I lost my mind and I was only thinking about this song. Three days in a trance. What do you do in a trance? You're only about bringing the song to life. I was in my therapist's office. And I said, I still feel like her, I still feel like her man. And I went, oh no, here we go. And I got in the car, I wrote down, still, I still feel like your man. And I looked at that title and I went, if we play our cards right, that is a major song. I, I had felt like, and I immediately Googled the title, I still feel like your man. Because I thought, 
someone must have had this idea. Whenever I have a good idea, I'm not even excited about it. I get immediately frightened that someone else has already had that good idea. So I Google that good idea. No search results. That's when I got even more excited. And I went, okay. I'm, I'm actually getting right now like excited. My heart is racing as I talk about this because this is about how you sneak up on an, on an idea like trying to catch a greasy pig. <laughs> and you're just like, okay, there it is. Let's not sing it too soon. Let's not just throw some BS cliche stuff on this idea. And for, for a whole day, I didn't sing to still feel like a man. I didn't make a note with it because I knew that whatever I sang, I was going to start getting attached to. And I don't want to get attached to a dumb idea for still feel like a man. So now I just have sheets of paper and I'm typing all different ideas about still feel like your man. And I don't think, and then I was in the shower and I was like, could I do it like a Prince ballad? I still feel like your man, you know, no, that's going to be shallow. Okay. Don't, don't even sing it. Don't even sing it. And then I'd already had written this idea, this chord changes. And then one day I went in the studio and it was the greatest luck in the world that this one idea that I'd written musically locked in with this still feel like your man thing. And it became this like weird, I called it ancient Japanese R&B. If you listen to it, it's like super staccato and clean. And it, like, I'd never heard anything like it come from me. And so for the next three days, I did nothing but enter like this. It's hard to explain, but it's true. If you can feel it, you're a little bit not on earth. You're like half of you is in another place. And for three days, I did nothing but bring this song into my life. And I listened to a lot of Marvin Gaye. There's definitely like some Marvin Gaye thing happening in the tune that I, I didn't want to block. And when I was done with it, I had this really interesting jam that's like hopeful, but also like has the saddest line I've ever written. I literally cried when I wrote, I still keep your shampoo in my shower in case you want to wash your hair. That's the saddest lyric I've ever written in my life. Think of how much desperation is in that line. She's not coming to wash her hair at your house. It's over. But the idea of keeping the torch lit where you say, well, I'm keeping it there. It's like, you know, there's like this dog in Japan. And the dog had an owner. And the owner would go to the train every day. And the dog would follow the owner to the train and then be there at the exact time the owner came back from work off the train. The dog would be waiting on the train platform. Then one day the owner died and the dog still waited at that platform for his owner for years until the dog passed away. I love that story. It is true. There's a statue of the dog where the dog once stood himself. And I very much in breakups feel like the statue of that dog. <laughs> Not even the dog. I feel like the statue of the dog. Oh my God. It's a fantastic story. Yeah. Thank you. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad this all worked out to where you could come in. I, the day I came back from the show, I was like, man, uh, you know, some of this record sounds like music that we would play, you know, in this format. And I went, and listen, I'm not always the most popular guy traditionally in this format, mm -hmm. just because I do things a little outside of the box. But I was like, man, some of this record, uh, there are a couple songs on there, um, In the Blood, uh, there are a couple. Roll it on, on home. Roll it on home for sure. Yeah. I was like, this is exactly what it is. You know, th it's even more traditional than some of the things being played now. Right. Um, and so I was like, hey, why aren't we playing it? And so I played it and got screamed at and, you know, it was a whole thing. But now here we come full circle yeah. and you've had a little time and some other stations and other people have played it. And I think it's been embraced really well by Great. people outside. And with you to thank for it. Let me ask you a question. If you had played that song, In the Blood, without telling people that it was me, would they have objected? No. Right. So, and, but on, and this is the truth too. I can handle it, man. I can no, no, almost nobody. I say almost, man. Almost nobody objected. That listened anyway. The only people that objected were radio people. Got it. No listeners were like, "This song's not country. This song's not anything." Yeah. They were like, "Wow, that's a fantastic song," or "Wow, I love John Mayer." But we don't play John Mayer. But that's what they're saying. It, that's what it. It was yeah, just sure. a thing from the inside. Sure. It wasn't people that wouldn't embrace it, that listen, that consume it. It's and funny. that's the weird part. I try to be a person of the people more so than a person of the industry. I get you. And if that, well, that's why it feels so good. Like you said, outside of the box, to give a sense of how different the world is. I haven't heard the phrase outside of the box. No offense to you. I haven't heard the phrase outside of the box in 10 years. Everything's outside of the box. 
every possible like there's no box anymore, you know. And I think what you're saying is there's a box here. Well, there's a box here. There's still. a box here, and, and and you know people have vested interest in keeping the box taped up shut, you know. And I think it's very interesting to say the least that you're looking at it going, well, why do you have to keep the box closed? Because everyone else listens to music differently. I have friends who listen. I put the highway on. You know, the highway's become like a pop station for, in the sense that, like, I work it. It's in my presets. Like, there are times I love hearing it, you know? Um, and that just goes to show you, there's, there's, like, when's the last time someone asked you what's on your iPod? When's the last time someone said, like, what genre of music do you like? It's all completely disassembled. And, I, you know, thank you for being a champion of stuff that's cool and fits and saying like, well, whatever your notion is of it, you know, let's try not putting that, uh, you know, as a barrier in front of the song, you know. We're going to play it. We're going to play In the Blood now. Appreciate you coming by. Thank you. It's not not country. It's <laughs> true. You know what I mean? I don't. I'm in Livingston, Montana. I live in Livingston, Montana. That's pretty country. That's pretty Western. That's pretty Western. So I like he's saying he fits in. There's a body in my backyard. <laughs> hey, do you want to? Amy gave me this picture in like 2000. And, and an old six shooter buried hey, in the uh, ground. For my birthday, Amy painted this for me a long time ago. Yeah, hey. Yeah. Like 12 or 13 years yeah, ago. When did you only have like one tattoo here? Uh, a long time ago. And That's then I, when I painted this. And I started doing silly stuff. And it says say. This is, you, you don't get you to know, keep it. No, 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 no. I'm a fan <laughs> of. Uh, yeah, she painted it for me, but, so if you wouldn't mind uh, signing that. I would love to. And I'm going to put it back in my room where it has been for. It's just a gift from her. Hmm, yeah, say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like a blah, 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 hmm, say. But what do you think? Um, like as an artist. As an artist? Yeah. I think it's, I could tell it was me. <laughs> That's it. See, it's, I even did yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, I want that haircut bag. <laughs> We're going to play in the blood. Appreciate you coming by. I hope the show goes awesome tonight. Thank you. And yours too. Thank I you. I want to know how the emoji joke works. I'm giving I don't you, think I'm going to do that at the Opry. I'm giving I, you my cell phone number and I want you to, I'm like, not like doing, I have a home number. I'm going to give you my <laughs> home, office, and cell phone number. I'm giving you my cell phone telephone number and I want you to tell me how the emoji joke goes and you can use emojis for it. I will not do that at the Opry, but I, I'm in California. I'm doing two, two shows in California this weekend. Where are you going to be in California? And so, uh, plug like, it, plug it. Well, trust me, I do enough. But uh, <laughs> I'll be in uh, Monterey and Modesto both. But like a Love lot Monterey. of a lot of TV bookers are coming out to to watch because I'm rarely on the West Coast. And booking for what? For late for lots of shows. Late yeah. night slots, or would you would you bail on this dump to be on a sitcom? Is this what you're saying? I would not bail, <laughs> no, but they are uh, coming out. To... <laughs> It is kind of a dumpy studio, you, right? Look, it's the look, biggest. Robbie, they're going to give you cones. They're going to give you a reserved spot. You're going to lease a Porsche Cayenne. You're going to you're going to live in uh, Studio City. It's going to be great for you. Wow. Mm. You're going to shop at Whole Foods. Wow. Oh, I see. They're going to live the life. Dang. You're parked right next to Johnny Galecki. <laughs> you're going to be on a. You're going to be on the lot. You're going to run into Mario Lopez every damn day, and forget about all these losers, aren't you? <laughs> That's the goal. <laughs> <laughs> All right, John Mayer. Uh, thank you, John. Good to see you, buddy. Thank you. Man. Have you enjoyed this? This, this was. You're great. This was great. This is great. This is like. Are a you great being? Is this ironic? I, no, I, I don't do that. I, okay. I wouldn't do that. Um, <laughs> this is like we we had a dinner and we're like already on dessert and I'm like, oh, we didn't even really get to it. I agree. We could have spent next time you come to town or I'll come over. I'll come up to Montana. I would love we'll to hang out with the dog. Would love to. All right, here we go, John Mayer, everybody. It's a 